Block V is, you know, a project we've covered a lot on Crypto Canvas, and it's a project that's clouded in mystery. It's It seems to be hidden strategically, and so I figured, you know, a nice community spaces to kind of talk about it. People can ask questions. We can really break down what I believe is one of the most bullish assets in crypto. Of course, none of this is financial advice, but the people behind this project are the big dogs in every room they go into. So it definitely deserves our attention. And uh, Wadzilla, I know you recently um, have gotten involved with, with uh, the ecosystem. What, what are your thoughts so far? I mean, just looking over their site and who they've partnered with had me pretty shocked that they partnered with like the NBA and Doritos and, you know, a lot of these major brands, but they've gone, I don't know, just, it seems like really unnoticed in the crypto space that, that put me in shock. And that also makes me excited at the same time. Yeah. It presents a massive opportunity. I think there's an asymmetry there. You know, we, I think many of us have seen that graphic where it's like, these eight corporations own everything and it's, um, you know, there's Unilever, there's PepsiCo, um, a couple other ones in there and Block V and their ecosystem, their network partners have, have literally worked with almost all of those massive corporations that own 90% of what we see when we go into a grocery store. So it's very interesting that that type of stuff doesn't seem to get people's attention. Why, why do you think that is? I mean, I don't even know. I want. I wonder how is it – like I want to know how is it being used. So let's – they're partnering with Doritos, right? Like how is their um, NFTs or what they're providing, like how is Doritos using that? Is it like the code that you use on a bag of chips or do you know how that works? Yeah, so a big thing that they talk about is the interface moment, which you know I've talked about a lot on this channel, but some people might not have heard about it before. But essentially it's – this moment when the complexity of a technology gets hidden. So the browser sits on top of the internet, which allows us all to use it without having to be tech geeks. And so they're taking that approach to blockchain. So a lot of these campaigns that they've run with Frito-Lays and PepsiCo and Yahoo and American Express and Intel, et cetera, et cetera, they're running these campaigns, but the users don't even know they're interacting with NFTs. They're just digital objects. All the complexity is hidden in the background. Nowhere does it say it's an NFT. And essentially what this is doing is it's building a one-to-one -one relationship between the brand and the end consumer and skipping the middleman of all those marketers uh, that is super inefficient for both sides, right? The, uh, the corporations are having to pay these middlemen all this money. And instead of being able to just give us that value and we're getting spanned with ads and you know none of us really care about uh, ads and all that BS marketing. So essentially they're, they're revolutionizing that industry um, as well as others which we'll get into but a lot of these campaigns like for example the world cup last year the frito-lays bag all had a uh, qr code like you were mentioning and the, the people would scan the qr code and then they would get entered into uh, raffles they would get digital objects that they could interact with there was treasure hunts all this type of stuff which um, in my opinion over the last eight years they've been doing these campaigns to really tweak out uh any hiccups and as well as gather the data of how effective is this and according to all their documents this is anywhere uh, as high as 50 percent more effective um, uh, in building loyalty engagement between the brands and the end consumers wow and do, do we know if they're like you said those frito-lays do you know if like does it say like, you know, powered by uh, V blockchain or something like that anywhere on the bag or is it like hidden? And if it's hidden, I wonder if they're doing that intentionally. I think they are doing it intentionally and it is hidden. 100%. Yeah, no, it's definitely hidden. Um, and the utility of the token as of now is basically for every NFT that is created, it, some V is consumed. It requires V as the gas to create these NFTs. Um, and in their telegram, they've been hinting at uh, an even an expanded token utility as they enter the next phase. And in my opinion, part of the reason it's hidden is because they want the interface moment to be the actual utility to be the focus, right? If you really think about it, nobody cares about buying crypto. People want to make their experience, their life, their business better. That's what people care about. And so when they're walking into the boardrooms of all these companies, I don't even think the companies know about the token per se because it's hidden so deep 
down in the technology stack that that's not the main focus of what they're doing, which to me is incredibly bullish. And that's why they've been able to get these clients that they've gotten. There also okay. might be something to be said about the skepticism to mass adoption of these technologies being a hindrance to these contracts and these big deals that they're trying to make with these massive corporations. It's easier to it's easier to produce an experience or to sell an experience than it would be to hypothetically be like, here's another blockchain cryptocurrency project that could be an exit scam in six months. So I think a lot of it has to do with getting these dinosaur corporations in on board. Yeah, I kind of see the token like a Trojan horse. You know, they're 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 building out the uh, the pipelines for the actual tech with the token just hidden in the background and and possibly in the future that token will you know come out of the Trojan horse and start being maybe it'll be a loyalty token, an interoperable loyalty token um, for all these corporations. Um, it might be basically the reserve currency of of loyalty and marketing and advertising. And when you think about who these people are, these, these people invented not only the NFT, but they also invented Tether, which in an interview, Reef Collins talked about, they did zero marketing for Tether. What, what brought Tether to where it is today, right? Peak at 100 billion market cap was just the utility. And so I think they're taking that same approach. They don't want the marketing, hey, buy our token, buy our token for whatever reason. They want the actual utility to be the reason why it goes to billions in market cap. Yeah, and to follow up on that, not not to bash like HBAR in any way, but like Hedera, they've got they're always publicizing like, look how many millions of transactions we've done, and all, and all these partnerships and everything. And with V, when you go to their website, you can see they've done millions of uh, these NFTs and these transactions. And it's like, and it's just it just goes unnoticed, but they've done so many. Yeah, and it's even bigger than loyalty and marketing. I think that's where they're starting. But when you think about the utility of these tokens, it, it expands the Internet of Things because every every device is going to have a digital ID. Not only humans, but there's way more devices than there are humans, and they're all going to have digital IDs. And um, you think about the, they're programmable, so you could have HIPAA-compliant NFTs where you own your own data within this wallet, and the doctor doesn't have to know everything about you until you unlock it. Um, in supply chain, et cetera, et cetera. I think these smart NFTs are going to be the foundational of our digital, the foundation of our digital lives, essentially. Yeah, I, def I totally agree with that. It's going to be, man, it's just crazy thinking about it. I just hope it's used for, man, I hope it's used for good. I know it's going to be used for evil in a lot of ways, but um, there's so much good that can come from it. Yeah, that's always, that's always one of my four thoughts with all of these technologies. It's like it's gonna. It's just like anything else. Call it atomic energy if you want to. You know that straddles the line between massive propensity for good and and also evil. So it's just something that mass adoption and, and awareness by the culture overall is going to be required to kind of keep it in check. Right, and uh, I want to backstep just a little bit because I know you you did say that um, with Block V, you know, creating these NFTs. Um, you said a little bit gets burned each time. Now, is it burned like in the sense of like burned gone forever or does it like go back into a pool and, and get redistributed? Do you know that? Yeah. So half of it goes to the node operators and then half of it goes to the stakers. So that's, I don't, I don't think that's the classic definition of burn, but it uh, gets redistributed to the participants of the ecosystem. Do you know what's required to be a node operator? <laughs> yeah, I've looked into it. I'm definitely interested in it. But as of now, it requires 100 million tokens. Um, oh, damn. Which, yeah, and not only that, plus actual approval by the, the node operators, which right now there's four, I believe. There's Vatom, there's Smart Media Technologies, there's BlogV themselves. Um, and I think there's one more. I forget which one. Wait, you're telling me they have four nodes and they can run all of this? Like this, that that's that's crazy. Yeah, I mean it's definitely centralized. I think um, I think a lot of these institutions, these platforms, like 
whether it's Wads Pay or a Stronghold or Block V, I think they're starting centralized because it's easier to actually get adoption that way. And then over time, you can scale to more decentralized. And that's where possible node opportunities for people like us might come into play, where they might lower the amount required to run a node. Obviously, I'm speculating here, but they did actually hint at that um, in their press release about something called the Smart NFT Association that they're, they have in the works. Okay. Um, so can you speculate with me? Where, like, where do you see this project going? Like I mean, I'm a full the next year or two, you know, this next bull run. Well, I'm a full on moon boy with, with blog V and there was many reasons to that. Uh, one most notably being just the people involved. So many people don't know about Peter Diamantis. Are you familiar with him? No. So I always say he's basically like Elon Musk without the fame. Like he's one of these like tech gurus. So he has a company called um, X Prize, which he actually launched with Elon Musk. They're, they go way back. He has um, he's behind Singularity University. He's basically like the godfather to all these tech people. Like even the the team behind um, Stronghold, they 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 all went through string, uh, Singularity University. So he, he's a big dog, and he he's the one who coined the term interface moment. And so I believe what they've done is they've built the distribution channels, they've worked out the tech for almost 10 years now, and they have a watershed moment planned where essentially they're just going to unleash this across all ecosystems essentially within the course of like a very short amount of time. If you do a little bit, if you do a little bit of cursory digging too, you can see the conditions being set for some big announcements coming in the future. And you can, we found a lot of material in our research that has shown that these partnerships are ever growing. Yeah, I believe that uh, they have they have Amazon already in the bag. They have Microsoft. They have Google. So, so interesting about Google is so basically you have Block V, which is the technology engine, and then they built so far two companies on top of Block V. One being Vatom, led by Eric Poulier, the inventor of the NFT. And he also co-invented the browser. He was a part of that ecosystem. So these are like the OG tech guys. And Vadim also creates metaverse environments. And Google held their worldwide company get together in the Vadim metaverse. Over 22,000 people were in their Vadim metaverse already. So that shows that this platform is getting chosen by Google. Like I said, uh, Microsoft. Uh, I've seen Visa in there as well. Um, I think they're going for the whole shebang. This whole Starbucks campaign that they're so Starbucks has a loyalty campaign in beta right now, which is all built around these smart NFTs. So I believe that's built on Block V, and I think they're they're going to unleash across all these mediums all at once, essentially, even YouTube as well. Wow! So it's got to be really cheap to run their token. If you know, if they're pushing it through all these companies, it's got to be like very inexpensive for them and all these uh, major companies, I know they like to see, um, you know, this long time frame. You said like 10 years they've been running or something like that. Like that looks, they want to see that, you know, it's been running operational and everything's been running smooth. Yeah, because it's a big risk for these corporations to just, um, uh, revel, you know, imp implement their a whole new technology. You know, it's a very big risk. These are billion sometimes trillion dollar corporations so it takes time and i think they wanted to keep the token hidden so that they could build in silence right there's a lot of competitive advantages to that um also regulatory possible regulatory advantages to that and so i see i see some very big things coming for these guys jeremy what would you say here Oh, sorry. I was saying the same thing, basically. Uh, we When we were doing a bunch of research through this, um, I think I think that they're I think they're in the stage where they're getting ready to announce. I'm not who, who's to say how long that would be, but I would I wouldn't be surprised um, if it's in the next, you know, six to eight months. We hear some big news from them. For sure. And if you really think about what made Facebook what it was, right? Uh, one of the biggest corporations in the world is really all around data. Many people didn't realize how valuable data was um, 10, 15 years ago. And what Block V has built is revolutionizing the entire data economy, 
which you know they say data is the oil of the 21st century because essentially through these web3 wallets you're gonna and zero knowledge proof technology you're gonna own your own data cut out the middleman and you're gonna have a one-to-one -one relationship with your favorite brands and they're gonna pay you to access your data right so you can deny people you can accept people and then how they'll pay you is they'll give you experiences they'll give you dynamic pro programmable objects that can be redeemed for discounts or for real world objects um, and it's a pretty big deal. They call it zero party data. Yeah, we recently discussed a lot of this in a recent podcast with Ian Buswell on the page. So if you guys want to check through that just to see kind of an idea of the possibilities or, or the, the maybe um, possible use cases of these NFT technologies. We went over a lot of it in there. Was that the video with the lawyer? Uh, no, it was, um, I think podcast, podcast number eight, number eight. Yeah. With Ian Buswell. Okay. I'll listen to that. And also if you look at the relationships they've built with Deloitte and Accenture, um, they have a very strong relationship with them. The entire Deloitte metaverse was built in Vadim. Um, the Accenture ecosystem has been using smart media technologies for all of their campaigns over the last five years. And what's so interesting about those corporations is essentially they're the, the holding corporations for all the other brands that we all know and love, right? They're the, the consultants, the advisors to all the brands we know and love. So it seems like Block V has strategically targeted the top of the pyramid. And once you lock that down, then, you, then everything else just, just falls into play. It's so difficult to get this coin also. Like it is it was a little tricky. How'd you end up getting it? Uh I went through uh Zapex and I ended up converting ETH and then it like it hopped like maybe seven or eight different times and then I got bridged over into Polygon. Yeah, it was it was a little tricky. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, and if you think about traditional NFTs, you know, there's a Simpsons episode that just released a month ago where one of the main punchlines was, oh my God, we turned our son into an app. And he says, no, apps actually do things. He's an NFT, right? Hinting at the, or poking fun at NFTs that they don't really do anything. They're just these JPEGs um, and apps actually do things, which is very interesting because since the very beginning, the inventor of the NFT, the Block V guys, They've talked about how these are not JPEGs. These are programmable digital objects. You can put a brain in them. They can evolve. They can change state. They're combinable. They, can, they have a listener to the internet. So if you think about ticketing, for example, you, your ticket will be a smart NFT. And if the Lakers score over 100 points, it, your NFT converts into a free bag of popcorn next time you come. Or it, or it uh, changes state into a highlight of LeBron dunking on Dwight Howard or something along those lines. So it's really going to take what people perceive to be as just JPEGs that have very little utility to, to really, I think a trillion object opportunity. I think most every digital object we see on the internet is going to be one of these smart NFTs. Yeah, I a hundred percent agree with you. And, and what shocked me also was, you know, Casper, a lot of people know the Casper, Casper partnered with Block V and Smart Media. So I wonder if that's where they're getting some of their technology from where they're saying, hey, you know, these NFTs are can upgrade and stuff like that. I'm like, I'm wondering, you know, what that partnership is actually bringing to Casper. I think you're dead on on that one. Yeah, I heard Reeve Collins talk about, you know, Reeve Collins and then I forget her name, but the, the CEO of uh, Casper. They were actually on a forum together at the World Economic Forum, um, I think in 2021 or 2022. And one of the things Reeve was saying was, you know, Block V is blockchain agnostic, right? So it can run on any of these blockchains, essentially. But what's interesting about Casper is it was the first time where nothing had to be changed. It was just a perfect fit because Casper, the layer one, is also upgradable. So it's almost like the smart NFTs of, of layer ones where the smart contracts can be upgraded. So it's just a perfect perfect fit and both of those ecosystems are working with a lot of the same corporations man if you're right about this then block fee is going to be like i don't know it's going to be like no one saw it coming but if you looked into it you you would have saw it coming but it's it man 
It could be massive. Yeah, I mean, it's a fifth of a penny with 92% circulating and a $7 million market cap. So, I mean, if you look at Gala Games, it went to $20 billion market cap. So if Block V does that, that's $7 a token. So what I wonder is, why is it so... Like when I was doing a purchase, a, a decent purchase, um, I was influencing the price quite a bit like it, there's not that much on the market it seems like like i'm wondering is most of it in staking or do the partners have most of it but like there's not a lot on the market which will make the price move really quick yeah i think in staking there's roughly 10 percent in the staking pool and i think at this point a lot of people like us know what it is and like i'm not selling <laughs> anytime soon so I just think the the liquidity is, is super, super low uh, for those reasons. And I know the founders, you can look on there and you can see the founders' wallets. They all have not sold, have not moved any tokens since since the launch of it. So they also have a stake in it, which is always good for me to see um, that they, they have upside as well. Yeah, that's good. And that can keep the SEC away, not, not trying to like sue them for you know anything like that, selling the token for their benefit. Yeah, and I would imagine that is part of maybe the concern that they've had um, around not marketing the token and trying to keep it hidden is just to keep the SEC off their ass, as well as you know these other reasons we've talked about. Um, because they did do an ICO. And what's also interesting is the people behind this actually invented the ICO. They did the first ever ICO. Because There's these other characters involved named uh, Craig Sellers and Brock Pierce um, were also on the founding team at Blog V. And before, right before Block V, about two years before that, they did the first ever ICO. Um, but Ma uh, World, no, I forget what it's called, Mastercoin or something like that. So, I mean, the pedigree of these guys is crazy. They invented the stablecoin, they invented the NFT, they invented the ICO, they invented the, the browser. <laughs> it's, it's like the most stacked ecosystem I've ever seen. And um, uh -huh. I believe, yeah, they're definitely hiding the token. So what gives you this theory that they're going to be releasing this on like multiple chains all at once? Well, they did a press release. Um, I'll post it in the nest here. Um, a few months back, if you read it, it's incredibly bullish. Um, and they've talked about in many interviews having a watershed moment, which uh, is essentially a moment you know, we're like the chat GPT moment of crypto, essentially, because if you think about it, chat GPT just dropped and then boom, now everything changed. And I think that uh, block V could have that same effect when they open it up to everybody to use and build on top of. That's kind of just where I see see things going. Yeah, chat, chat GPT was like overnight. That was fast. Yeah, essentially, it's the interface moment for AI, right? So you don't have to be an AI developer. Anybody can use it. Um, and I think blockchain hasn't had that moment yet, right? You still have to be a, you know, a nerd like us. You know, it's difficult to use all this stuff. There's not like grandma and grandpa can't use it. It's not really being used in like people's day-to-day -day lives. And um, since the very beginning, the, fir the first pages of their white paper talk about how Block V is going to be that moment for blockchain itself. And I also think with blockchain, I think most of the value, and Ian Buswell talks about this, how a lot of the value isn't going to be at the infrastructure level as much as the application level, um, which is even more bullish because that's essentially what BlockV is, the application level for blockchain. Right, and they're targeting the enterprise level. I mean, like they want the big boys. And as you were saying earlier, that's who they're partnering with. Yeah, I think those deals are, are pretty much all signed. Um, if you look at the Vatim website, they've got the Nike logo there. They have the Apple logo there. Um, they have Starbucks, of course, Coke. So I think if, they're, if those logos are on the website, that means those deals are already, already signed and done. All right, so I'm not educated. What, what's the difference between like Smart Media, Vatcom? Like, is there a... Block V, is this like just all one large company or is there, you know, s smaller companies that have merged or is this, you know, can you explain that? 
Yeah, it is confusing, but uh, the way I've thought about it is essentially they went out and they created, uh, here's an analogy, right? They invented the browser, and then they went and created companies on top of the, like the, basically the first ever websites or companies that go out to the big brands and say, hey, we have this browser technology, we can help you build on top of it. Um, and the founders of Blog B, Reeve Collins and Eric Poulier, split off and made two kind of uh, br sister companies. Vadim and Blog V, or uh, Vadim and um, Smart Media Technologies, and then those companies go out and build the relationships with the corporations. I don't know if that makes sense, but well, I mean, yeah, they're they're just yeah making the separate corporations probably with their own purpose. So, yeah. Yeah, from what I've seen, Vadim kind of focuses a little bit more on metaverse environments. They talk about how every website's going to have a come inside page. Because right now, if you told your mom, hey, let's meet at, you know, shoes.com, she's going to be like, what the hell are you talking about, right? These websites are not places, right? But they're talking about how there's going to be a come inside button basically on every website. You click it, you link, instead of your, with your email, you're going to have a wallet, uh, which is going to be your identity as you travel through the internet. And you can go into the website, and now that website comes to life essentially it becomes 3d um, and that seems to be what vadim is focusing on a lot they also focus on wallets but smart media technology focuses on very heavily on the wallet application of of the tech Man, that would be crazy just going to like nike.com or any random website and just getting into the website and then you can see like hey these are all the other people that are on this website right now with like a space to hang out that sounds pretty cool yeah, and then you think about the AR application, you could AR try on the watch or even AR, you know, when you combine the uh, the glasses that Meta's rolling out or Apple's rolling out and you can virtually try on clothes or all that type of stuff. And then there's going to be a sales associate in the website that you can talk to and all that type of stuff. And then even further down from that, when you do buy a new Nike product or a new Apple watch or whatever it might be, that's going to be transferable content via NFT to all your other virtual spaces. 100%, you know, and, and they have relationships with uh, a lot of these major gaming companies, right? EA Sports, they've got that deal seemingly locked. Um, Eric Poulier just did a, a, a discussion with the lead people from Epic Games who are behind Fortnite. And I believe they've already done nfts in fortnite and the players don't even know <laughs> so uh i think they're way farther ahead than they've, they've they've built themselves such a lead that they're almost untouchable and now it's just a matter of of them coming out and fully uh unleashing publicly crazy so not financial advice but where's their market cap at right now seven million dude <laughs> Dude, that's crazy because Casper is like – it's probably working off a lot of their technology and Casper's up to like what, 400 million or something? Gosh. Yeah, that's something we, I, you know, I like to specialize is these micro caps and I, I've looked through hundreds if not thousands of them. And since I discovered Block V, everything else just seems like child's play. Like everything they're talking about, every other company is something Block V has been working on since 2016 with the biggest companies in the world. And yeah, 7 million market cap. It's like, what kind of opportunity do we have right here? And it, what's, what's mind blowing to me is you have such smart, brilliant people in the NFT space like Ilio Trades or Alex Becker and seemingly they don't even know about this, which is mind blowing to me that like, how can you be so, how can we like not even just picking on them, just how can people be so, you know, bullish on NFTs, but not even pay attention to what the founders of the NFTs are doing. It's, it's insane that it's flying under the radar like this. It really could just be that they're a lot of people are trying to hold it close to their close to their vest. Cuz it doesn't make sense otherwise, you're right. I don't I don't see why they wouldn't be aware of them. Yeah, 100%. For sure. I mean, even while I was accumulating, to be transparent, I was like, I'm not telling anybody about this. It's like, pack my bags because it's just so bullish. And there's such low liquidity. If someone comes in with a couple hundred grand, the price is going to go up uh, significantly, which 
is just more bullish for when this gets unleashed because I think billions will come into this asset. If the market cap is smaller than Wads Bay. That is wow, that just blows my mind. It's so under the radar that even right now, I mean, every token, uh, even the scam tokens are going up hundreds of percent right now, <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know, and Block V isn't doing shit, which can be annoying to some people, but it just presents massive opportunity on the other side of that. Yeah, yeah, I might have to pick up like a few more million. That's This, this sounds really good. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. I don't have any more questions. You definitely made me a lot more bullish on the token. <laughs> Does any of our listeners, I see Crypto Knight, Nick, anybody have any thoughts or comments on what we've been talking about um, so far? Jeremy, do you have any V? No, you keep harassing me about it. I really do need to get some. I think, uh, I think I'm going to be doing that pretty soon, though, because... I don't want to miss this bus. I missed so many last run. Yeah, one of the smartest people I know in this space, Brando, he, um, he, he's done a lot of really amazing things, one of the best I've ever seen, and he believes this is more bullish than any asset he's ever seen. So the confirmation is coming from a lot of directions right now. What's up, Nick? What's up, guys? Can you hear me? Chilling, chilling. Yes, sir. Loud and clear. Nice. Uh, yeah, no, it sounds like a really interesting project. Uh, this is pretty much the first I'm really hearing about it, but all those partners you were talking about and, you know, the uh, the people leading the company, it sounds, it sounds like a strong project for sure. Interesting that it's under the radar. I mean, there's so many projects, though. It's, it's kind of easy for things to go under the radar, you know? So... I'm going to, I'm definitely going to be looking into it though. It sounds really, what was the market cap of it? I mean, no, what was the, uh, uh, the, the supply, total supply? 3.6 billion. 3.6 billion. Okay. So good, good tokenomics, low market cap, good partners, good team. Sounds like a good project. Yeah. I mean, I feel like most projects they'll, they'll announce one big partner and then everybody goes super crazy meanwhile block v has all the partners <laughs> uh and uh and the team is the most bullish i've ever seen yeah that's cool i'm gonna look into it i have you guys done any uh any videos of it any youtube videos of it about it yeah definitely i kind of launched this channel uh, really my first 10 videos were all about the ecosystem. So I have a playlist section on the crypto canvas YouTube called the blog V playlist, where if you make it through that, it's probably about an hour of content. Um, you'll definitely have a very good understanding about all the nuances. Okay. I'll check it out for sure. Yeah. There's, uh, there's so many projects out there. It's really, if we can find a few that are going to, you know, make it through this, uh, make it through the purge then uh we should all be doing really well yeah all it takes is one you know gala last cycle did a 3000x oh don't is... don't 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 get me started on that <laughs> <laughs> yeah i bought a node when it was like two thousand dollars dude and i just kept spending gala i just kept spending it spending it if i would have held it easily a millionaire easily like i got on the bus and, and I got off the right, the, the next fucking stop. Damn. <laughs> brother, brother, I'm uh -huh. right there with you. I'm right there with you. I literally bought my note for $2,000, $2,200, and uh, didn't buy the token. So, wow. It happens. Well, learning lessons, guys. Hopefully, uh, don't make those same mistakes again. How do you know when to sell, though? You know, how do you know when is. I guess we just wait for peak bull, right? That's kind of what we we got to look for. Well, no one truly knows the peak, but all I'm going to do, man, is I'm just going to follow history. The last three cycles, it's been like, I don't know what they say, like nine months after the halving is usually around the peak, and I'm just going to take a good chunk of profit around that time. I did not do that last time. 
that's not financial advice. That's just that's just what I'm gonna do. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to. I've I've made plans and they're constantly evolving. So I think it's gonna continue to evolve, but it's definitely gonna be interesting. And I definitely want to look into uh to the project you guys have been talking about. It's so it's it's pretty much all based on like the, the utility of it is all based on NFTs. NFTs are the foundation, but there's also Web3 wallets. So there's something I highly recommend everybody look at, which is the Open Wallet Foundation. Their website's openwallet.foundation. They're part of the Linux Foundation. Um, some of the members there include Microsoft, uh, include Google, include Visa, and um, Smart Media Technologies, which is built on Block V, uh, is the found one of the founding members of that association. And in, in, in an interview, Reeve Collins talks about how this foundation is going to be using their technology to roll out their wallets. Um, and in a lot of their presentations, they talk about how the wallet is actually the browser of blockchain. Right? It's going to be that that uh, killer app. The actual use case, everything's going to be sent around the wallet because it revolutionizes the data economy, the, the ownership economy, and identity uh, is going to be solved uh, on the internet through the wallet. So they also focus on that. Of course, you know, there's extracurricular things like AR and VR and 2D and 3D and metaverse environments, but the foundation is the smart NFT um, and the wallet. I just got a question I, I forgot to ask. Do they have their own layer one? Like, because I know, like a mainnet chain, because I know they're using Polygon, they're using Ethereum. Do you know if they're ever going to make their own? Yeah, so they're blockchain agnostic. So, yeah, they do definitely use Polygon. They're definitely a big player in Polygon Studios. Um, but they can also be like like we talked about in Casper. They can be on any blockchain. Period. But they do have their own layer one, and so that is something that they've they haven't really built it out or done too much with it yet. Um, but in their press release about the Smart NFT Association, they they teased at uh, expansion of of that ecosystem of their of their layer one. Awesome. All right. Well, yeah, I'm definitely going to be picking up some more of this. I just got to figure out which other token I'm going to take a little bit of cream off the top. Um, thank you so much for inviting me, though. I'm going to I'm gonna head out. You guys have a great night. Hey, you too. Bro. You too, brother. Thanks, Wazella. So I, I was just, I was thinking about how earlier you were talking about, like, the, you know, the digital experience. You were saying something about, like, a shoe store, I think, and, you know, how you could kind of go go into this shoe store on the web in the web three. I don't know if I'm ex describing this correctly, but you were saying something about shoes and like an NF. Yeah. Yeah. I was giving just Hello? the shoes were just an example. Yeah. It was just an example. Um, yeah. No, I was talking about how uh, Eric Poulier talks about how every website will have a come inside button because they're adding people, places and things to the internet. So people is your identity through your Web3 wallet. You'll now have an identity as you travel through the internet. Um, places will be, the websites will become places. So you'll have a come inside button where you go inside the website and it becomes a 3D immersive environment. So I wonder like, will you be able to go, you know, cause I don't like to buy shoes online to be honest, cause I like to try my shoes on. So I wonder if there will be like a, you know, some kind of way to to make it where people could virtually kind of try their shoes on, make a little experience out of it. I'm I'm 100 percent sure that's something that that they'll, they'll work into it at some point. I mean, it, it makes total sense when you have a total virtual world laid on top of the real world that you would have all of the services and goods that you could acquire in the real world inside the virtual one. Right, like virtual fitting rooms. You can go try on a shirt, try on some pants. That would be that would be very interesting. Yeah, and when you combine like what Apple's rolling out in only a month, I believe, is like their their AR goggles. And I believe their developer version, that's why they're so expensive, but that is definitely where everything's headed is this uh AR immersion and blending that barrier between our digital and physical lives. Um, and these smart NFTs are going to be the foundation of that because every object in that virtual world is going to be a smart NFT. 
Yeah, definitely intriguing. So these the the founders of uh, some of the founders of V um, Block V they they develop or they created NFTs. Yes, sir. I believe in 2014 uh, they invented the first NFT and the first NFT platform, which is Block V. And they didn't envision JPEGs and gambling and speculation. They were thinking about the utility of it, um, because that's the way these guys think. These are the these are the big boys. They also because prior to that they invented Tether. Wow. Yeah. No, that is uh, that's some accomplishments right there. I was uh, when I first started when we first you first started the space i was looking up block v and when i looked it up uh gary v popped up he doesn't have any uh involvement in the project does he it's uncertain at this time i don't think so but who knows well i will say that uh smart media technologies and vayner media are partnered together um and i can verify that on linkedin they they're always flirting with each other. They've been on panels together. Um, and it is interesting, you know, some people would call it a coincidence. We, we don't know that <laughs> the face of NFTs is his last name is V and uh, the foundational token of NFTs is also called V. So it could be a coincidence, it could be the universe doing its thing or it could be planned out. Um, there's no way to really know. Well, interesting. I know Gary V, does, he, he has his own little NFT project. And I'm pretty sure he's pretty bullish on NFTs. So, yeah, he ho he hosts uh, VCon every year, which is I'm pretty sure like the most popular blockchain summit. You know, you have celebrities there and all that type of stuff. So, Logan Paul, all those type of people, and um, yeah, he has uh, V Friends, I believe it's called. This is NFT project. Yeah, that's where, what it is. Yeah, he talks about on a daily basis, pretty much. Yeah, I did. I, you know, I didn't understand NFTs when I first got into crypto. It didn't make sense to me. But now, you know, hearing the utility behind it, there's NFTs are definitely going to be around for a long time. Yeah, I was one of the few people in my circle of friends who didn't jump in and buy a bunch of NFTs because I didn't see the utility in the beginning. But once I once I expanded my knowledge base on what the true intent of them is. I think that they are going to be the basically one of the primary driving factors of the digital economy. Yeah, NFTs have a terrible name for sure, like a, a, a stigma attached to the name rather, um, and for good reason. Really, there was a lot of scams, and the basic utility that we saw last cycle was was uh, pretty weak sauce. Um, and it's interesting that even throughout that first NFT boom, the Block V team stayed quiet the whole time. Um, and I think the next time we see NFTs rise to stardom, Block V will be leading leading the charge. Well, I'm gonna have to pick me up some. Where do you? Uh, I heard uh, Wadzilla saying it's pretty complicated to, to purchase at the moment, huh? I mean, I've been buying mine on Uniswap. Um, if you go in with a big bag, there's definitely a lot of slippage, so uh, it might be, you know, good to spread out if you have, you know, a decent amount. But but Uniswap is where I've been accumulating. It's on zero centralized exchanges right now. Zero centralized exchanges, and it's at a you said seven million market cap. That's that's pretty good. Yeah, and if you look at the team behind it, you know, with one phone call, they could get it listed on any exchange they want. So it's all intentional. It's all strategic. Um, but I don't think it'll last too much longer. Um, the, in this, in this way. Yeah, I definitely am starting to feel the, the push that I have to do it soon myself. Yeah. You don't want to feel like I did with gala. <laughs> <laughs> Not yeah, I'll probably, I'll probably, I'll probably dump a couple grand into it in this next month. I think we've all felt that way about one token or another. I know I, I feel that way about Tau. I was looking into that in like April, May, and couldn't really figure out how to buy it, so I didn't buy any. And then uh, look at it now. But I own a little bit, but not as much as I wanted to get, you know. 
Yeah, and that's why Block V is so interesting because we have a time to, you know, we're buying it at a fifth of a penny at the at the bottom. You know, we're like sucker fish right now, just sucking it up at the bottom. So those opportunities are are pretty rare. So I think you can get a million tokens for around two grand, which uh, might be a future whale. We'll see. But yeah, it's been a good talk, guys. Any any other uh, last points anybody wants to bring up? We're all good. All right, appreciate you guys. And um, any further questions, just uh, slide in the DMs.